Replay is sponsored by Brancolonia. Brancolonia is the all-Italian setting for the fifth edition of the world's most popular fantasy role-playing game. Set in a topsy-turvy version of medieval Italy, this unheroic, picaresque and roguish world quotes, collects and mixes references from contemporary Italian fiction and pop culture. You get the likes of the wooden puppet from Pinocchio, the half-demon Malebranche from Dante's Inferno, or even the Puss in Boots, some even as playable species. Spaghetti Fantasy is a low-magic, gritty fantasy with little money for special effects, whose atmosphere is very similar to spaghetti western movies, but with swords instead of guns. The tone is light-hearted, its protagonists are neither heroes nor anti-heroes. They are knaves with little will to fight, chicken thieves, bandits with a heart of gold. After triumphing at the Any Awards in Indianapolis, gold for best electronic book, silver for product of the year, best writing and best setting, the fantastic world of Brancolonia returned to Kickstarter with three new volumes at the community's request. The Bounty Kingdom Gazetteer, the Spaghetti Fantasy Bestiary, including recipes for cooking monster meat and managing its side effects, and a compendium of adventures. Intrigued? Play Brancolonia and other Acheron games like Lex Arcana and Inferno at acheronstore.com slash RPG dash Brancolonia. I took the lead. Somebody's heart. Twenty years ago, we played a game. We recorded that game and shared it over the airwaves of a high school radio station. WKEY AM 1360. People listened. So did other things. 20 years later, we were invited to play a live reunion show for the hardcore fans. Little did we know, this time, the game is real. In this world, the players are confronted with their truest desires and deepest fears. And only they can decide when the game is over. My name is Haley, my pronouns are she, any, and I am playing Rory, the fool. My name is Jen De La Vega, my pronouns are she, her, and I am playing Fern, the dictator. My name is Alex, my pronouns are he, him, and I am playing Andrea, or Andrea, the emotion knight. My name is Banana Chan, my pronouns are she, they, and he, and I'm playing Deliria, the godbinder. My name is Kappa, I use he, him pronouns, and I'm playing Lucas, the neo. And my name is Aram. My pronouns are he, him, and I am playing Jacob, the master. Welcome to Replay, Chapter 4. Wave 4. There's this sad moment for Tony, as he is fondly remembered for the loving himbo that he was before his heart was impaled. And then you just settle in for this long journey north. As you get deeper into this sea, this sea of inequity, it gets gray and it gets quiet and the wind gets slow and the ship gets slow and the day feels long and you just enter into this gray kind of endless malaise where you just feel sad. Everything feels bad here. Like all of the excitement, Andre, is gone. Andrea is trying to get people to jump out from behind corners to feel a little surprised just to keep it up, and it's just not working anymore. Even the orcs aren't into it. The first couple of hours, it was kind of okay, and then it just like, mm, me got stuff to do. 
Now, our vampire friend is having quite a lovely time because they can stroll about the deck in the middle of the day here without any problem. I mean, it's a little uncomfortable. They still have a parasail and long gloves on, but they can be out and about on the deck as they're strolling around, looking into the gloom. Otherwise, it's just a quiet and steady journey north. There's echoes in this place. There's unease, sadness, and memories seem to float up. Memories that mainly have regrets attached to them. And your mind kind of wanders to this idea of like, you have all these new ideas for books, all these things you could write. You could sit down right now and you feel like you could write three whole books. You have this finally, this thing you've been wanting for so long. If you just could have experienced this before, you could have written the book. There wouldn't need to be a ghost writer. It would be all yours. And in that moment, an apparition appears in front of you. But it's not all yours, is it? And there's a ghost of your ghost writer standing in front of you. Can anyone else see the ghost? Yeah, absolutely. Anyone else who was on deck can see this ghost manifest directly in front of Deliria. Who else is on the deck? Yeah, who else is on the deck right now? Let's say it's like late at night, like around 1 a.m. Yeah, I'll be on the deck. Okay, you're both on deck. What are you two doing on the deck right now? Oh, gosh. I'm probably really bored, and I was probably trying to get Lucas to, like, just play tic-tac-toe with me, like anything. (laughs) Sure, you're just carving (laughs) into the deck. Yeah, yeah. 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 (laughs) Excellent. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so you two are doing that. You're just playing tic-tac-toe, and it's like the fourth board. But you forgot that this boat must be either magical or alive because it heals itself. So by the time the game's done, you've moved on to the next one. By the time that game's done, the first one has already repaired itself. It is no longer etched into the deck. So this is a deck of living wood. This is a feature of the of the boat that we had enchanted it with in the original story. How did that happen? Drop into a little flashback for me. What was the event that caused this boat to be enchanted like this? At the time, we just got so tired of playing the realness of repairing a boat. <laughs> After every battle, after every... I had a whole chart. You're so intense I made about you it. go through this chart every time. I constantly talked about the <laughs> ship of Theseus. Like, I was just really yeah. into it. And you're just like, enough, Rob. We don't want to do the ship maintenance game any longer. I just had to pay for the maintenance. You're like, no, no, no. Here's exactly the damage. And here's what... Sails of five gold and the ropes are ten gold. And the wood, you have to find the wood. Oh, there's no wood in this one. It's a shopping episode, but you have to go and chop down the wood yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys were done with it after the third time I made you do the boat quest. So we went to an island that had elves and ironwood that was magical, and enough of it was built into the ship that it was then able to heal the ship and take over the ship. So the ship is now stronger, and the ship can heal its own wounds. Wounds is a little bit perhaps... Wait, it makes you feel bad for carving into it when you think of it like wounds, so we don't do that. <laughs> The ship is not sapient, (laughs) but it is made of living wood. And and part of the the start of that conversation was like, remember, you know, this ship, like our ship? And then it's like, oh, yeah, like, oh, yeah, that's right. It repairs itself. And we just start (laughs) doodling and playing (laughs) tic-tac-toe. Yeah, just carving into it, because who cares? It fixes itself. It'll go away. It'll exactly. Go away. Those little edges where you slammed into it and did all and did some dents in the wood, fixed. Fine. No problems whatsoever. Railing's fine. Ship looks brand new. In fact, all those patches in the in the sails, that must have been recent because as you've been out to sea, you saw them heal and just the stitching blended into the rest of it, and now it's like it was never there. And so in the middle of like this tic tac game. In the middle of all of that, off to the front of the boat, Deliria is now talking to a ghost that just appeared <laughs> in front of her. And it's got to be a ghost. It's all it could be. It's a translucent, glowing, <laughs> foggy thing. Not it the must be a ghost. Translucent goth lady. Right. <laughs> uh, I think you all hear a scream from the other side of <laughs> the boat. Oh, hey, sorry. Kind of all I can do now. You... You're, Zo- is that you? Kind of, yeah. 
Zoe? Yeah. You look different. Well, I'm a ghost. I, I mean, yeah, aside from the ghostliness, you also look like my age. Well, I'm not a kid anymore, Deliria. None of us are. Right, I forgot. It's not the same. I haven't seen you in 20 years. It's been a while. Forgot all about me. I... Don't worry, everyone has. Well, what are you up to these days? Well, haunting. A uh, little ethereal jaunts here and there. Mainly haunting. Haunting. But I really just haunt, like, my own memories. I haven't really gotten to haunting other people's memories yet. I'm working on it. Uh-huh. Okay. I think you're doing a great job. Oh, well, thanks. You're definitely here, haunting me. Yeah, I felt your energy. Oh, as soon as you appeared here, I felt your energy. And I've been honing in on you ever since. Okay, well, uh, you look great. Um, things are great here. Uh, nice seeing you. And uh, I'm going to go back to doing what I was doing. Okay. Which... Delira, who's that? Did you kill somebody? <laughs> no, I didn't kill anyone. <laughs> This is a ghost that appeared. Do you remember Zoe? The ghost vanishes. It appears right next to you. Hey, <laughs> I'm Zoe. From Calculus? You ran the lights. You were in tech. Yeah, I ran the lights. I was always behind them. Couldn't really see me. I mean, you did good work. It's. I did a lot of good work, didn't I? They're here now. They're just hanging out for a bit, and they're going to go, right? Yep, guess I'm going to go. Anything else you wanted to say to me, Deliria? Nope, nothing at all. Wait, 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 wait hold on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so nervous, Deliria? What do you mean? I wasn't even this nervous when Anna showed up. I'm not nervous. Well, maybe I'm not doing my job well enough. <gasps> Boo! Boo! I love this. <laughs> we could get you a sheet or something, maybe really sell it. You toss a sheet over her, but it just goes right through her. Just <laughs> poof, right to the deck. <laughs> Sorry, let me let me ask that again then. Um, Zoe, why is Deliria so nervous? Well, I guess Deliria would have to tell you that themselves. Last chance, Deliria. So... Please don't tell us to Andrea or Fern what I'm about to tell you. Like, this stays between us here. Because we're friends. Uh, well, no, sure. Fine, we can classify ourselves as friends. If you want. You don't need them. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, I mean, I was <laughs> there, yes. How can I forget? I <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling them right now what they want to hear, and then, you know, maybe they'll get off my back. Did you say that out loud? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So we're not friends. That's fine. We can be casual acquaintances. You didn't kill Zoe, right? No, I didn't kill Zoe. I. No, she didn't kill me. Just the idea of me. Zoe wrote The Water Bearers. And I paid Zoe 50 bucks and a handle of vodka. Kettle one, too. Listen, we were 16. It's not like you could just get alcohol easily. Yeah, but even at 16, kettle one's kind of a step down, but it was okay. I only drink Sky now. <laughs> <laughs> but you wrote the water bearers. I had really good plans for the second season. I had some really good ideas. It was a fun game. But I liked your show. Why, wh why did you, pl you played with us though? Uh, this looking at Deliria. Yeah, she played like on like some, like when you guys did one shots, when everyone couldn't show Aww. up, she did some one shots <laughs> with you, right? That's but they so were good. never officially canon. They were just happening yeah. in the world. But Deliria shouldn't, you shouldn't have needed, you were there. Like you were there, there. Just didn't really have anything to write at the time. And 
you know, I wanted to be cool and make a cool thing and I couldn't think of anything at the time. I was just, it's so hard to write. It's your job. It's your literal profession. I mean, right now it is, but before it was just really hard to think of something, you know, like I can't just come up with something without prompts. Do your job. Just do the writing. <laughs> do the writing like you would do any other job. This is the thing you chose to do. Now do it. Show up nine to five and do the writing. <laughs> <laughs> Water Bears is kind of the only thing you've ever written. And you didn't write it? I'm, I'm a little confused. I didn't write it. Zoe wrote it. And I just happened to buy it off of Zoe. So technically the rights are still mine. And then and then you wanted royalties for whatever the reboot was gonna- 80% I recall. <laughs> it is still mine. No, it is Because I bought, the, <laughs> I bought the rights fair and square from Zoe. Where's the contract for that? You bought her labor. You did not <laughs> buy her IP. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was a handshake deal. Rory locked all that up. <laughs> In the realm of ideas, are you right? Yes, you're right. Are you legally right? No. <laughs> you can just see the smallest smirk appear on the ghost's face. Let's hold for one moment there as we go below decks to Fern's quarters, where there's a knock at the door. Uh, she's been polishing her rapier and her hair is down. It's flowing, it's long, it's black. And um, she goes to the door and cracks it open. And there, in one little ray of light that always seems to hit her, is a gorgeous blonde vampire in this beautiful emerald silk dress, just kind of leaning casually in your doorway. Hey, you Fern, what you up to? May I help you? <sighs> Honestly, I'm just bored. Oh, you don't, you don't have your Tony? I do miss Tony, he was fun and tasty. But I wanted to talk to you, because you're also fun. Am I? In a new way. I can hear the rumbles. I know the sounds. You're teasing us. You haven't used it yet, but you could. She uh, narrows her eyes and makes a, she puts a finger up to her lips and goes, shh. Don't tease. Let a little bit of it out. Just let me hear the smallest word. Tell me to do something, something fun. I'm sorry, the voice is not for fun. Oh, all right then, I'll be patient. Just letting you know, any little time you want to throw a word my way, I'd love to hear what it sounds like. A tiny little curtsy, and she smiles at you, her teeth glint, her eyes glint with malice, and she turns on her heel, strides away. Back up to the top. The ghost smirks just a little bit. Deliria, in the back of your head. I'm sorry, pet, but a deal is a deal. And you aren't the only one who makes them. And the water around the ship begins to bubble. Something is rising. But it's not your god. One fair goal detected. Two fair goal detected. Five fair goal detected. Twelve fair goal detected. Thirty-nine fair goal detected. Eighty-one. One hundred and thirty-seven fair goal detected. Oh. <laughs> the, uh. um, something <laughs> is happening. There's so much gold. As you're like, get a visual of it, there's like the ship, there's a whole bunch of ocean, and there's one giant lump of gold rising towards you. Oh, 
so we should go as fast as we can somewhere else. Andrea bursts onto the top deck. Is like, is something finally happening? We're gonna go really fast, really far away. I, I guess I'll, yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> Delira, what is happening? Something is coming after us, and it's not anything that I know about. Okay, all right, all right, we go. Let's go. Let's, and then I'll, I don't know, sails. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a boat person. Yeah, sails, rope. There's not a ton of wind right now. It is this malay. <laughs> <laughs> Start blowing on the sails, fanning it. <laughs> I can see Lucas doing it. Lucas, 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 no, Lucas. Y you're, God, you're so dumb. That's a good idea. But isn't the ship like in, 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 at, it was at, at the beginning of season two when it was one of the outtakes. Isn't the ship enchanted like, isn't it like, doesn't it have tech? Can you hack it? Can you get into the ship and make it do stuff? Vibe. Hello. Vibe, access the reservoirs. Clarification. There are no reservoirs aboard a ship. <laughs> there is, however, a bilge, which is, I believe, what you're trying to tell me. Yes, that one. <laughs> bilge has been accessed. You're starting to glow like little lines under your skin, little parts of you are just starting to glow and throb as the AI really kicks in. So you know how you shovel coal into a- uh, uh, Into like a furnace. Engine to, yeah, into a furnace. It's like that, but it's a glowing orb filled with water that if spun faster, the Nomad cuts through water easier. The sails aren't just sails. They don't just capture wind. They capture the magical weave that threads around this country like wind. So when you are able to juice this furnace to really get those sails going, absolutely. But you're going to have to go down there and shove your hands into that furnace to make it go. That's where I'm going. You bump right into your ex-vampire lover. Oh! All things getting excited. I can't deal with you now unless you're you're either helping me or you're out of my way. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go down to the bilge. And she takes off her high heels, throws them over her shoulder, and goes running down with you. How excited! Andrea goes like banging on Fern's door. Fern, Fern, something's happening. Oh really? Uh, I'm in my nightgown. <laughs> What does Fern's nightgown look? What is her nighttime look? Oh my god, they've got um poofy ruffles on the shoulders and it's just like little chrysanthemums like woven together all the way down. Adorable. I love it. <laughs> Hair's all up, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Probably got the eye mask on. Like you're set for bed. <laughs> She's a frozen eye mask that glows, yeah, for sure. And she's she's like, I'm gonna get dirty again. Ugh. Lucas and Anna go racing down into the into the engine room while the rest of you go racing up to the top. The seas now are getting rocky. The clouds are dark. The thunder is constant and roaring all around you. And there's just this coming up from underneath you. And where there was all this phosphorescence as the ship cut through the water, there's now just a darkness rising. I'm gonna get on like into the crow's nest, like as high up as I can get. Try and see if I can tell what's like down there, if there's an overall shape to it. You just run up this long beam, leap yeah. off it, grab a rope, swing over, and just <laughs> climb your way. Like, it looks so cool. It's all parkour all the way up there. Yeah. Swing over the edge, <laughs> grab poor ex Tony's spyglass, <laughs> and start looking around. And now you can see this shape. And as it bursts up through the water on either side, there's something big and dark down there. But right now, all you can see is a tentacle as it rises out of the water. And right where you are in this crow's nest, it is eye to eye with you for a split second before it slams down onto the deck, splitting the rest of you in half. All of you have three decks except for Deliria. <laughs> Rory's the most active right now. So Rory goes first. 
Okay, okay, okay. Big tentacle came up and then smashed down into the boat. Yep, smashed right across the deck, flat across it, and then just kind of like over the edge. Okay. Can I, um, this is so dumb. I'm just going to continue to do the dumbest things I've ever thought of and call it a character. Perfect. Uh, (laughs) Please. Yes. Yes. It's pure panic, and it's that the feeling of, like, I can do whatever I want that has just become sort of the the back-of-the-mind mantra since Rory has changed into this paragon, is that Tentacle comes up, sees Tentacle's about to go back down, and jumps to grab onto it on its way down. Hell yes. Why not? And I don't foresee me staying on or near the boat. But <laughs> I would like a dexterity roll plus your full die. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and because you're jumping down onto it from up top, you have the high ground. So go ahead and take advantage as well. Advantage meaning an extra d6. Oh, okay, so I continue to not get my fancy circles. <gasps> Just fine, and I'm not mad about it. Draw one more circle. Yeah, I did get three successes out of that five, though. So. No sixes. Oh yeah, what do you want to happen? What I want is to get a solid handhold on this tentacle. Yeah. And then to maintain it. So as this tentacle comes down with you riding on top of it, it slaps down onto the deck, swings over the edge, you slam against the side, but you don't let go. And now you are hanging off a tentacle 10 feet above the water as it dangles over the edge of the boat. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) All right, that is exactly where you are. That's where I wanted to be. Creature goes next. Another tentacle comes up and slams down onto the boat. Jen, unfortunately, (laughs) this is your first time taking a shot. Uh, What is your, as you come up onto the deck, uh, what is your defense and what is your guard? My defense is zero (laughs) and my uh, guard is three. Okay, so this big, huge tentacle slaps down right above you. Oh my God. Two, 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 three, and a one. (laughs) All misses. So as Rory is riding this tentacle down, you see Rory go over the edge of the boat like, oh my gosh, and that catches your eye just so you can avoid the tentacle coming in and you're able to roll out of the way easily as it smashes onto the deck and gets caught in the railing and it's stuck there and it can't pull back. I think Fern like just got attacked, so Fern is probably active. Go ahead, Fern. Fern is going to yell to Rory, I hope you have a plan for that! <laughs> I don't. I really, really, really don't. <laughs> As you're being smacked up and down. Like, yeah. I don't have a plan. Well, I'm going to make it a little more mad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Just two just get lifted, two thumbs up, and you disappear over the edge of the ship again. And she she goes to that tentacle that's stuck in the railing, and she just takes her rapier and just stabs downward into it. Like a shish kebab. Roll me intelligence before you do. A two and a six. Just as you're about to sink that sword home, you notice that instead of suckers on the other side of it, there are these semi translucent sacks. And you see something moving inside them, and then a pair of teeth gnaw and snatch. And you notice that every single one of those sacks must contain a fallen. Oh. And as you think that, a couple of them are bursting open and fallen are crawling out of the arms and snatching at the air. All of them are scaly and their eyes are shifted towards the sides of their head unnaturally. It's humanoid features, but with a shark's mouth and a big fin coming off the back of the head. She yells into the sky, Jacob, that is not anatomically correct. (laughs) (laughs) There's a little flash of thunder and the slightest hint of laughter. 
How many of them are there? Well, right now there's about four, but theoretically there could be right hundreds. hundreds. Oof. Okay. Um, she is holding her rapier and um, she's it. And she brings her arms down to her sides and closes her eyes because she's about to change her voice. You you hear like kind of like a John Carpenter synth sting. As if a magenta light were shining down on her. <laughs> yeah. You must be afraid of each other. Roll your d4. We got a two. Okay. Two successes. Go ahead and roll. Go ahead and add a die of advantage into this one, because this is clever. I like this. Thank you. We got a, oh boy, a one, a one, a three, and a four. Okay, so three successes total. Fallen has a willpower of four. Okay, so you're only able to get this one Fallen. Your powers only let you control one mind at a time. And you don't take total control over this Fallen. There's still some of them left, whatever is left in a Fallen. But this one is afraid. And that fear radiates. All the others pick up on it and they descend on him, and there's just carnage. Andrea was surprised, at least, uh, by stuff happening. Uh, I don't think it's particularly intense. I think it's just like at a steady strong. Yeah. Um, but does just like let the chain snake down his arm, and it's like, hey, uh, I know you probably don't care, but something exciting is happening, so... <sighs> Water zombies. Really? <laughs> really? What do you want? It's water zombies. Zombies, but they're in the water. <laughs> Ooh. What a threat. Uh, just, uh, just, and just like flings the chain. Wait. <laughs> Wait. But I'm going to try wrapping the chain around one of the tentacles and try taking down the tentacle instead of the fallen. Okay. How are you doing this? Are you wrapping one with Rory? Andrea didn't really notice Rory being caught. Fair enough. Andrea is going to, without noticing, because, you know, amazement, surprise, and distraction are the three emotions that they work with. Also, Rory's currently, you know, dangling about 10 feet <laughs> over the edge of the deck right now. Yeah, so yeah, not super visible. Is going to try using the chain as a chainsaw around the tentacle by just wrapping it around and making it run. Woo! See if we can saw off the tentacle. Okay, roll to hit first. That's two successes. Three successes. Three successes. Okay. Two fours and a five. This thing has a defense of one, so that cuts you down to two successes. This thing has four tentacles. This is one of those four. You pull tight, real tight, and it starts to squeeze, and you can see the tentacle begin to flop and flail, and as you pull, it pulls against you. I want you to roll now your strength, and I want you to roll your strength with two extra dice for your two successes. That is a six, a five, and a four. Wow. Woo. Okay. All right. And a one. Okay. What is the special thing you want to have happen? I want to saw this tentacle off. <laughs> right, that's going to happen. What else would you like to have happen? It starts writhing enough that it chucks a couple of fallen off the deck. Nice. Just as it keeps writhing across the deck, it falls back off the other side. You pull back, and then you almost hear an engine start up as the chain begins to slide very quickly through your fingers. Not enough to cut you, it's not hurting you. It's almost like you're protected. It should be shredding your hands, but it's spinning like a chainsaw blade through your hands, rapidly rotating around this thing and just slicing through it as it rips up into the air and lets go of Rory. Rory, I would like you to roll your dexterity plus your full die. Okay. Didn't see you there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you feel so bad. <laughs> God, I literally still haven't gotten my circle. I'm going to freak out. <laughs> Draw another circle. Does that mean you, do you have five circles now? Four. I will have five after this. That's crazy. There's only six sides <gasps> on the die. <laughs> Draw one more circle. 
I got three out of four successes though. So one of them was a six. Is that the number that I need to? That's fantastic. So how do you not be thrown over the edge of the boat? Because <laughs> he just sawed the whole tentacle off <laughs> that I was holding on to. Yep. And you're flung through the air, but what stops you from going over the edge? What stops me from going over the edge is I'm flung high enough that I can actually manage to not even get like a full grasp on a rope, but sort of wrap my arm around it enough times that I can slide to a stop before the uh, rope ends. You're flung in an arc. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you rolled really well. You got wrapped up, you're flung in an arc. You are currently circling around the boat, coming back <laughs> around. So on your turn, you will be delivered right back into melee. <laughs> We go below decks as you all burst into the engine room and Anna's like, oh, well, I guess we're getting our hands dirty, aren't we? As she's rolling up the sleeves of this elegant dress. Okay, yeah, uh, yes. Um, I don't remember how this works. I'll look at the furnace quotes, um, cause it's not like your traditional, you know, steam furnace, you know, it's not coal, it's a magical implement and open up the grate and it's you know how the 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 outside of the boat has like cerulean kind of like an ivory it's like a glowing jello of cerulean that is filling up this furnace i don't remember i don't because i because i was never the one who did it and i just it looks like you're trying to. Increase the polarity of the transfusic pulse generator. Would you like me to help? Yes. How do we do this? You can interface directly with all Neotech. Oh, okay. And this is Neotech. Correct. Interface. So, okay, okay. I, I, I look at Anna. Okay, it says it says interface directly. It like, do I touch it? That's how you always interface directly with me. Oh, shut up, and I'm going oh, wow. to plunge my hand oh. <laughs> into the furnace. Plunge both hands into the furnace and your eyes. Energy that is now transferring back and forth is gigantic, and you still have to pump more into the engine. As that's happening, the tentacle slams down on the deck. The edge of it crashes in through the porthole. And three fallen, crack out of these sacks and spill into the room. Caution, if you disconnect from the transfusic pulse generator before polarization is complete, there is a 78% chance it will implode. So you are stuck now with both hands buried in this engine as fallen are beginning to rise around you. <laughs> I shoot. Anna, just the like the most like I can't believe I have to trust you in this moment. Look, don't worry, darling, I've got this. And Anna rolls to strike one of the zombies. NPC fight. NPC fight. <laughs> one, two, three, four successes. Anna just goes, darling, I got you. Grabs the first one's head and smashes it against the wall where it explodes like a melon and then get started on the next two. Back up to the top. Hey, God, if you can hear me right now. Hey, God, it's me, Deliria. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's me, your favorite child. You have quickly become my favorite. Thank you. Alas, this deal was made long before I was known to you. I am barred from interfering in this conflict. Good luck, my dear. Impress me. What, what sort of deal? What... What happened? There was so much sorrow in that one. So much betrayal. They had all of their soul to offer, and I took it down to the depths. They'll be 
here forever, my little pearl. But you, my darling, will have to suffer just a little bit. Show me your faith. Do not wander. I would like to cast a scripture, please. Yes, absolutely. What would you like to cast? (laughs) I would like to cast Tentacle Blast. Nice. Okay. And attack as... I, how many tentacles are there on the... So there's one that's been cut in half and like it's like... And bleeding and sinking down below. There's one on the deck being active. And now there's like maybe... there's You know there's, that there's two others because you've seen them rise up. But right now there's only one on the deck. Okay. I will aim for the one on the deck. So wisdom plus d12. You just need one success. Four, four, one, one. Two successes. Is the one the d12? No. Good. Okay. Then the gods answer your call and tentacles appear. How do they appear? From where? I think from my chest. Oh, of course. Of Of course they do. The most horrifying option. Yeah. The worst worst one you could have said for sure. (laughs) Your rib cage just separates. The nails draw in and tear and rend, and you just hear a wet crunching as these tentacles explode. These ectoplasmic tentacles explode out of your chest and lunge towards this other tentacle in the most horrific hentai horror (laughs) any of you have ever seen. Yeah, Fern wretches again. She's very sensitive. So sensitive. This is pretty intense. I think even Tony would be like, well, I'm not so sure I want to be here anymore. I'm kind of glad I'm dead. Fern, I'm so sorry. So these tentacles shoot out, and I'm assuming go to grapple the other tentacle, right? Yes, they they go over to the other tentacle, strangle it uh, to the point where it, uh, it sort of collapses through this other tentacle, cutting it in half, and releases its grip and sucks right back into my chest. They are greedily grabbing huge chunks. They're feeding, they're eating, they're dragging flesh back into. You can taste the bile of this creature, but you feel good. You feel fed. Can I ask to be healed by one? Yes. As you ask to be healed by one, one of your tentacles rips through one of the sacks and grabs one of the fallen. And in that moment, you see a table somewhere in Iowa. Small farmhouse table. There's a group of kids gathered around it. Four friends, 14, 15, all playing a game. Until one of them shows up and says, Hey guys, I found these really special dice. I think we should try and play a different game. And then it flashes forward to them all in some world of die. And there's a full like dwarves versus elves 1940s trench warfare going on. There's mechanized dragons and horror and fire and screams and yells. And then you just see a flash of blood and you see this person fall. And then you see them sink through the earth, clawing and screaming and changing and emerging. And then you feel hunger. And then in a moment it's gone and you've consumed this. The coin is left, but fades, vanishes. The name erases from the coin and you feel a pulse and a welling inside you as you consume everything about that person. And you feel great. You feel rested. Like you've had a nice long sleep. Quick question. Do I have their memories? You can access them. But they're fading. They're gray. They're hollow. There was just these flashes of them. They were so intense and so bright, but now it's almost like you have a Polaroid in reverse. And it's just slowly fading to white. I fall to the ground and I'm just like, there's this euphoric 
look on my face and I'm just staring at the sky above me and I'm just not moving at all. Tears pouring down your face as one ray breaks through the clouds to shine down on you. There, my dear, you see, faith is gained through struggle. As two more tentacles rise out of the sea on either side of you. And one of them comes crashing right down on top. Let's see how this goes. That is going to be a five, a five, and a four. So that is three successes. What is your defense and health? My health is at one. (laughs) One out of three, and my defense. Wait, you just healed, right? I healed one. Oh no, you healed fully. Oh, I healed fully. Oh, okay. Well, then I am fully healed. Oh yeah, you just absorbed someone's soul. You healed fully. Okay, cool. Uh, Your defense as a godbinder is zero. How much guard do you have? Oh, I have two. In this moment of ecstasy, this writhing joy, a deep shadow appears over you and you look up just in time to see this other tentacle come crashing down. You roll out of the way, but the impact just blows you. It slams you against a wall, knocking the air out of you. You've taken one wound. Me. Back to Rory. (laughs) Swinging around on a rope. Yeah, so you have now (laughs) completed your circle and you are swinging with a large amount of momentum back towards one of the tentacles. What what do you do when you're basically just a guy with luck on your side and no knives? (laughs) (laughs) And no magic powers with a lot of people who have magic powers. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? I pause it the stupidest options possible every time, as I've said. And what's, what do you do for here? You go find how you kill the monster. Tentacles are not how you kill a monster. Mm-hmm. The body's how you kill the monster. Right. And the body oh, no. is not on the boat. <laughs> no. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, no. no. It's just that. That's not where it is. Yo. Oh, no. And we're not going to kill the monster. Delirio almost just died. Yes. <laughs> and had to absorb a child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's an unfortunate day. <laughs> All true statements. <laughs> I've had worse days. <laughs> really? Have you? <laughs> Getting confronted by the ghost of a child you stole from and then having to... <laughs> Yeah, but there was that one Monday where I had to make three transfers on the same bus line. So, you know. Yeah. Commuting is hard. <laughs> yeah, commuting's really hard. Meeting a child's easy. Does that count as a flashback for advantage? <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. It 100% does. Whatever you do next, you're going to get advantage and your full die. 100%. I am going to fling myself into the ocean <laughs> and look for eyeballs or mouths of the big monster because that's <laughs> yes 100 percent. so first of all yes of course you are did you yeah. take your fool ability which do you mean by that okay so the fool gets an ability mm-hmm. and one of them is like preparation cool ability i got equipment that's, that's the next one i thought that mm. was this one. Oh, okay that's that's no. that's the next one but you know that's what the first advancement you get i'm going to give you a tease of it how this ability works is that at any point during an encounter, a f- the fool can go, you know what, I've got just the right thing for that. You just happen to have it on you, right? So uh-huh. as you're flying through the air towards the edge, you just happen to set a harpoon up right on this railing because you figured this would be a really good diving railing. And lo and behold, it is. So as you go over the edge, you're able to actually roll me a dex roll just to make sure that you can grab this harp. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. Harpoon just dex. Do you want just dex on this one? Okay. Just uh, it was a two, five, and a six. Oh, fuck. you not only grab this harpoon, but you do a nice little backflip as oh, you grab God. it over the edge <laughs> and perfectly swan dive into the water. Harpoon clenched between your teeth. <laughs> so you go crashing over the edge <laughs> underwater and you instantly see what it is you're facing. It is a giant squid. It is a giant squid though with things. 
some large thing has been put into the back of its head, some sort of engine that has a huge fan, and as they suck in water, is spinning and spitting out water and ichor. As you see one of these creatures inside their little tentacle pods just and shrivel and get sucked and desiccate, much like Deliria does, but until they're a fine paste within this sack. And then this coin just appears and is floating around inside it. Black ichor pours out of the back of this fan connection as these two giant pale eyes turn towards you. <laughs> got a harpoon. I have a harpoon. Is this still my turn? Can I do things yeah. with it? Okay. <laughs> you can do a thing. That was your movement. <laughs> and you had a lot of momentum. I just let go of a rope and here I am. That's all you did. Harpoon. There is eyes. I did say eyes. I didn't know there was a big fan though. And if I could jam the harpoon into the fan and stop it, from doing whatever it's doing, mm -hmm. that's got to not be good for the squid. So this fan is sucking in and out as it breathes. So there's a current around the fan that you mm. have to fight. It's going to be risky, but you can yeah. absolutely do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would like you <laughs> to roll your dice plus your full dice and let's uh -huh. see what happens. Is this dexterity or am I doing something this else? This is definitely dexterity. Love to hear that. Thank you so much. And every face on my fool dice does now have a thing. Okay, Ooh. here it comes. There are five circles yep. and one cross. Yes. <laughs> so something's gonna happen. Something's gonna Shit. happen. Oh, I'm so nervous. Oh, you should be. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. All right. You are so okay. perfect for this character. I love you it. Really are. <laughs> We got a circle. There we, we go. We got a one, five, five, and a six. Ooh. And one of those fives was my circle on the full dice. Okay. Wow. So first of all, what is your special? Is there a special attached to your martial arts? Special? I don't believe attached to my martial no. arts. No. You only get no. a special on the full die. Right. Okay. Oh, actually, no. In any dice pool, which includes the full D6, you can roll another D6 and add it to the current pool. Oh. So... Haley, you can roll you an extra piece. That die becomes exploding. To. Yeah. It was a three. Okay. So <laughs> three full successes, though. What are you trying to do? I am trying to stop the fan from moving by kind of wedging the harpoon in there to the point that it is broken and can no longer turn. You get sucked towards it just in time for you to slam your feet down on the outside of this port this fleshy, gross port, and you slam the harpoon in, the fan cracks against it, you barely hold on, and you're able to fight it. If you let go, it'll be broken free. But for right now, it is stopped. The thing rise and screams. The tentacles are getting drugged back down towards you and flung back around. It's gonna try and knock you off of it next round. You feel if you can hold this for two rounds, you can kill it. And then here I will be. Okay. <laughs> all right. Erase all circles except for one. I get to keep one circle. And add an extra cross. So I get to keep one circle and then I should have two crosses. Two crosses. Yeah. Exactly. It is now the creature's turn. And the creature has focused all of its attention on Rory. As the tentacles are pulling off the deck, you guys will be able to attack them again. But there's two underwater and those both come for Rory. Don't worry, guys. I haven't gotten hit yet. So. You better be lucky. I am. That's my whole character. <laughs> four. I do six, a defensive one. Six. Six. So the That's four so gets removed. Fun. Okay. <laughs> As this tentacle swirls around you, and right before it closes down around you, and the blackness sinks and you start for the first time to question <laughs> the logic of this plan you hear a voice so brave so loyal to your friends I'm impressed I am glad that my chosen keeps such good company 
<laughs> Time seems to slow down as this voice speaks to you. I'm underwater. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't do shit. I'm holding on to a thing and I'm underwater. And delirious scary god is in my head. <laughs> Your eyes are bugging out. <laughs> You can think your thoughts to me, child. Do not speak. Save your precious air. I have given you time. Because you entered my domain. I have more control here. And I can offer you a one-time deal. Take the deal. <laughs> 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 um oh oh I have a thing I have a thing I don't need him I have a thing I'm, <laughs> there's a god in my head and and I'm just just panic just pure panic all panic only all the time <laughs> and <laughs> uh so glad that my chosen and I'll just think I love what you've done with the place. It looks great under here. And uh, <laughs> d Delirio was a great choice. Good chosen. I, I'm good. And then you feel like, like there was a presence there, right? Filling this space as the tentacles are closed and that presence pulls back. Then I'd love to see what happens next. Good luck, small one. Thanks. <laughs> the voice recedes and time quickly comes back and these tentacles just slam around you. I, okay, am I like about to die? <laughs> Is that what's about to occur? So you push back, but it just clamps down. It beats through all of your defenses and it starts to squeeze tight. Next round, it's really gonna start to hurt. Yeah, yeah. I have a harpoon, and I, <laughs> I have a, I have a failsafe. I have my big failsafe. You do. You really do. Please use <laughs> it. Really... No one has ever used it in any of my games before. Please use it. I want to really bad. <laughs> you can use it at any time you want. I know. Yep. You said next turn is when I maybe get fully fucked over. Yeah, so I'll, I'll hold on to it just in case. Just in case, but I really don't want to be in debt to the spooky tentacle god right now, so. <laughs> okay, what is the current threat? So the current threat right now is that there is a tentacle sliding off and there are three fallen rising to their feet. They're starting to refocus, but you've got a round to just, you know, pick them off basically. Fern is going to unsheath her, her sword again. And she just lets out a heavy sigh because she was very disappointed in her previous performance. She, her harshest critic, you know? <laughs> of course. And so uh, she does a sort of rhythm gymnastics throw where, where you throw the actual stick part and she grabs the right. end of the ribbon. And so it kind of taps them on the shoulder. Right. So, as, as sort of like a distraction technique. Yeah. Um, but of course, uh, she comes, uh, she does a, a, what's it called? A flèche, which is running past and swiping in, in her wet nightgown. <laughs> Soaked <laughs> and viscera strewn She's nightgown. She's frowning the whole time. Uh, she got a two, a one, and a six. Okay, one success. So you slash at this thing's flank. You see the tentacle scream and writhe and turn like it's refocused now, almost like it has eyes and looked at you. So it stops slinking off the boat and is now focused on you. She's proud of herself for a moment, but uh, sees the tentacle. Oh, crap. Have at thee. Oh, never mind. <laughs> All right, and that tentacle is going to swing right back at you. It is wounded though, so I'm gonna take some dice off it. One, one, two, and a three. You easily sidestep this flailing, bleeding tentacle of desperation as it slaps onto the ground like three times around you and then just slinks back below the water, completely missing. Right. 
replay is sponsored by Adventure Dice. Adventure Dice is your Canadian source for dice, role-playing game books, and accessories, and other tabletop gaming goodies. Many of our products are handcrafted in Canada. We're dedicated to creating gaming spaces that are safe, accessible, and welcoming to everyone. As gamers ourselves, we believe in offering quality products that we would use at our own table. Find us at your friendly local gaming store, at conventions, and online at www.adventuredice.ca. As a podcast network, our first priority has always been audio and the stories we're able to share with you. But we also sell merch, and organizing that was made both possible and easy with Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell and grow at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. They have an all-in-one e-commerce platform and in-person POS system, so wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. Shopify has allowed us to share something tangible with the podcast community we've built here, selling our beanies, sweatshirts, and mugs to fans of our shows without taking up too much time from all the other work we do to bring you even more great content. And it's not just us. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Shopify is also the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash realm, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash R-E-A-L-M now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash realm. Andrea's next. Everything is surprising. Oh, yes. Very exciting and surprising. Also a little distracting. Um, There's just things keep happening and they can't quite keep their focus on one single thing. And I think it is getting a little more intense. Um, They are not going to use creative violence, but he is going to run up to the three fallen and is going to strike at, just strike at one of them. Yay, more fallen. Have you lost me this time? Uh, that is a single success. So you just wrap the chain around one of the fallen. Like, <laughs> they're not down yet, but you've entangled them. Where, where did Rory go? Um, so as you wrap up that fallen and you're kind of struggling to hold them in place, a spear suddenly bursts through their chest. <laughs> Black ichor explodes. They choke and gag and then just fall apart into cords and pieces and ichor. And standing behind it is one of the orcs. Just gives you a nod and then she and a couple of the other ones descend on the rest, just tearing them apart limb from limb and hurling the pieces overboard. Behind them, you can see Naomi and she's running alongside that other tentacle, slicing off pieces of it with a pair of short swords. Let's go down into the engine room. There are two fallen. Lucas, you see them get up around you with your hands buried deep into this engine. You see them look and their eyes glint. You see the fair gold spinning in their chest as their giant shark-like teeth open and come towards you and then one of them just explodes. You see a knife edge of a hand slice right through the side of its head and cut it clean off. Anna lunges at the second one but she slips on her dress, it ducks under her arm and it comes right for you. Its teeth gnashing and its eyes wild. Two, a two, and a five. Only one success. I don't believe that gets through your guard. So you are able to like get a knee up 
right into this thing's chest and are keeping it back as this as these teeth are like arr, 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 just snapping right at your neck. The the tails are helping me. The tails are all grabbing and trying to hold it back. <laughs> Absolutely. Is there anything you think you can do with your hands buried in this engine right now? So it feels as if I'm funneling energy into it, some sort of magical energy. And so I'm going to experiment and just try and teleport the 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 globule that is present in one hand into the other and just try to juice magic that way you see two options in front of you you could do that you could also teleport that fair gold directly into you <gasps> oh my god did not even think about that yeah no that sounds oh. that, that sounds even better like uh just because i know how much it enhances my own magical ability i will do that what would you like to upcharge? Oh, okay. I think so. The way this works, I have a bunch of upgrades under this gift blink teleporter. You can either upgrade one of those, take any of those upgrades, or you can temporarily activate another gift. I'm going to activate uh, an energy weapon. What is the energy weapon? How does it come out of you? What is it? It's gotta be the tails, right? That's what I'm thinking. Like it, the 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 te the tail with a red tip. The tip starts to glow. It's just gonna whip that tail around at into the the jaw of this fallen that is harrying me and trying to get at my bits. I'd say that's a dexterity roll. Please go ahead and roll that and add your neo die. Hell yeah. And then also. Roll me your Neo die a second time and tell me if it's odds or evens. Okay. Three, three, five, five. Okay, two successes. For the odds or even is a five. Okay, so it works perfectly. This tail swings out. All eight other tails lash around it to form one thick rope as it cuts through the air. Anna smirks clearly seeing this attack coming and just casually leans out of the way as it passes right by her nose. Big smile on her face. <laughs> Adoration for you right now. That's the man she remembers. And it <laughs> cuts into this thing's face and just explodes it. It melts half the face. As it cuts it through, there's so much heat. The eyes explode, the teeth shoot out like popcorn, and this thing just viscera and blood and teeth everywhere. As this slow motion romantic almost view of her catching your eye, the smile in her face, you can almost hear the music as this thing collapses in front of you, completely destroyed. <sighs> okay. All right. So, I can do that too. That's everything, right? You go check on what's going up uh, up top. She picks an ear off of her face and tosses it to the <laughs> ground. Sure, darling. Let me go look. And she goes running up to the top of the deck. Back down to Rory. You are surrounded by tentacles. You are going to be crushed this round. What are you going to do? <laughs> well, what I'm going to do... <laughs> there is something in my playbook that says, if all else fails. Oh. And I think that's oh, no. sort of the situation that I've gotten myself into. So, mechanically, what I am doing is I am giving my fool die. Yes. To a ROM. Please hand it over. You may have it. It is yours. It is no longer in my dice tray. It is now mine. That is now a ROM's D6. Oh. So I may get out of this situation via a piece of unfeasibly good luck. The GM may return your D6 at any point to create an entirely unfair event on a similar or lower scale of awfulness to your previous use. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yep. So he Dude, can kill me with tentacles no. later if he wants. Or but... worse. 
or Our everyone words. around you except oh. for you. The same or lower. Same or lower. Probably worse. So, so my life on the line or less. Because <laughs> it, it's not going to happen to you. It's going to happen exactly. to everyone around you. Oh, exactly. yeah. That's how your bad luck works. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. how do you get out of this? <laughs> How I get out of what this. What happens? What miraculous <laughs> thing gets you out of this? Yeah. I send away a god. Yeah, you feel the god. As soon as that D6 <laughs> emerges from you and spins in front of your face, you feel the god pull back. Pull back. Almost just, just feels like they recoil from it. And there's just this beautiful, beautiful light all around you, the ocean is just a glow and you can see for so far, you can see all the fish and the creatures, you can see the seaweed far below, you can feel the ocean sing all around you as this dye seems to float in this perfect moment of harmony. And marveling at the beauty of the ocean and wondering what am I getting into? I accept how lucky I am and how much this world that I help build loves me. And I move just enough to jam my foot against the side of the harpoon and sink it all the way inside of the beast so that it dies of me. There is a horrid scream. The tentacles unravel and flail, and there is an ejection of ink from this thing, just blasting you right out of the water <laughs> onto the deck, covered in thick black ink as the tentacles writhe and pull, and you just see this thing sink away. The clouds part, the sun comes back out. <laughs> And it's a clear, perfect day on the ocean. Damn right. <laughs> While Lucas is still overpowered. Yes, yeah, we're right. going so fast. <laughs> you just hear a alert. Overcharge has been activated. Emergency speed in three, two, <laughs> one. Hold on to a handrail. <laughs> and the ship lunges forward. This sailing vessel is now going 45 to 50 miles an hour, skipping across the top of the water like a hydroplane. As you plunge through the edge of this storm and into this beautiful open sea. By the time you're done, Lucas, you're pretty exhausted, but the walls come into view. First, just the peaks of the mountain, and then the edge of the walls of the lock, this long, great wall with all of your names and all of your successes and desires and victories etched into them. And war it looks like if the Vietnam Wall was white marble, and each word, each letter was two feet high. That's the effect wow. that you look at. Your whole arm could go up to your elbow into one of the carvings of the letter. That's how wide and deep they are. Everything is beautiful. All of your victories are splayed out here. You feel this welling of pride as you see yourselves immortalized. Everyone except Lucas, who unfortunately his entire wall is under construction right now, but the rest of you, <laughs> feel this real moment and welling of pride as you sail along this wall toward the Great Locks. You all kind of collect back together, pick a few things out of your hair. Mm -hmm. The orcs are just chopping up tentacle part and already putting them on skewers to cook. Naomi's been sitting in the back and she's just been looking at her nails. Are you all done now to take care of the little problem? Where were you? I was right here. <laughs> you guys were fine. Anyway, shall we get sailing? As the ship sails reconnect, reform ropes, form it of nothing and retie it down, the wind picks up and you're sailing along the edge of this wall towards the lock and towards a lighthouse.
sitting directly in front of the lock, whose light turns to find you and illuminates you as the sun begins to set and follows you as you're traveling towards it. Who would know Morse code among you? Which of you geeked out enough about your <laughs> ship adventures to learn <laughs> Morse code? Not, not Fern. I would have gone with Fern. Really? If it's none of you, it's gonna be Andrea. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna yeah. say like I. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those things where Jacob was like, "You should learn Morse code," and I was like, "Nah." <laughs> I wrote in three major <laughs> plot points that were all given away via Morse code. And Andrea is like, my good. In that case, yes, Andrea is definitely the one. <laughs> yeah. He just started tapping away at the table one day. We were like, dude. <laughs> That's annoying. Please don't Stop. do that. Yeah. <laughs> Andrea, you've got a pen and paper and you're writing, please show paperwork, pull alongside. Please, Paul, do, do, do we do we have paperwork? Pa pa paperwork for what? Naomi, do you have paperwork do, for, the, for the Nomad? Oh, of course I do. I'm fully caught up. Hang on. And she goes down and comes up with a bunch of paperwork that is clearly forged. Okay. <laughs> but it looks good. What was the name of the old security guard who always lets you into the radio station on weekends? so you could record your game. <gasps> oh. Stu. 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 <laughs> Stu. S -T -E -W. Yeah. Stu. Yep. <laughs> All right. So you like pull up soup. into this lighthouse with like a guard tower built into the ground floor of it. But otherwise it's just a normal lighthouse, but it's a guard tower with like one little arm that goes out maybe 10 feet in the <laughs> middle of the ocean. It makes no sense whatsoever. Hey there, can I see your papers, young ones? And it's Stu. It's Stu, two days from retirement. Always <laughs> two days from retirement. Then he extends it a little <laughs> bit longer. I'll hang on for one more semester. What do you kids do without me? And he just keeps <laughs> hanging on. So Stu's just there. He's got pictures of his family up in the office all around him. He's got his little collection of seahorses all up on top of his monitor, which is like an <laughs> old CRT that's barely hanging on and flickering a green. How can I help you folks? Uh, I'm just sorry. Um, wasn't expecting to see you. Well, to be honest, not a lot of people come out and see me or the walls. The locks haven't worked in over a decade after all. That, that's the thing. I think we're trying to, Andrea looks back to the group. We're trying to get through. Well, I think that's, does that right? Kids, I'd love to help you, but these locks have been, no pun intended, locked down for some time. The code was lost to the ages. We haven't been able to get them open since. Do you know who we are? He squints and he looks at you <laughs> and he looks back at the wall and he looks back at you and he looks back at the wall and he looks back at you. But no, I don't think so. Not familiar. <laughs> Stu, right? Stu, yeah. How did you know me? Well, I guess I'm the only one here. Makes sense it would get around. You are famous in these parts. Thank you. That means a lot. How many digits would you say are in this code? Oh, I can show you. It's right. It's right here. And he points to a panel on his desk. And there's all these like old switches and knobs and like very tactical interfaces. And right in the middle of it is like it would be on the side of luggage, a four digit turning numeric code. OK, this stinks of Jacob. This does reek of Jacob. He thinks he's being clever and he's just it's just He's just annoying. Somewhere Jacob has hidden a four digit code <laughs> somewhere in the game. Did he? Did we see four numbers six sessions ago and nobody wrote them down? Yep. <laughs> Andrea is going through like, okay, so all of season one and this episode is 12 episodes. And Andrea just doing the full math layout in his mind. Oh, is it a year? Is it, when year was Jacob born? Can I, can I try something? Can I try? Would you like to try? Six nine six nine. Oh yeah, he was. And he just laughs, and he flicks six nine six nine. You're the loudest seahorn, like <laughs> error message. <laughs> We've actually tried that one a couple times. Okay, just I just needed to make sure. What about eight zero zero eight? Try that one. Mm. 
Flix 8008. Sorry. Oh, come on. J Jacob, Jacob was... A long time ago, we had this key. But somehow that key got lost. Was it the year we got together? Two zero zero zero. About seven three three one. <laughs> Fun. Is there any anything at the anything at the radio station that my Jacob would have used? Our frequency. Oh, the, what, the, what was the radio station? W K E Y A M. Thirteen sixty. Oh, <laughs> it's the only four numbers I know. <laughs> One, three, six, zero. And these massive lock doors swing open in front of you as you hear a. Well, uh, Stu just gets all excited and all flustered. Oh, okay. Um, hang on. Wait, wait. Release this gate. Release that gate. And the little teeny gate <laughs> rises up. Uh, <laughs> go on ahead, I guess. Enjoy your journey. Thanks, Stu. Uh, Stu, you'll do best to remember who we are. And she points at the wall. Then he looks at the wall and he looks back at you. And he looks at the wall and he looks back at you. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, they should really add a panel for you all here. You guys seem really important. Bye. Have a good day. <laughs> Thanks, As the dude. ship sails <laughs> into the lock. The doors <laughs> close behind you. And you see that you are approaching a drop off, a 20% ridge where this edge of the die shifts over into the next part of the die. And for a minute, there's worry and panic. And as the doors close behind you, a wave forms in front. It fills the water and you feel your ship rush backwards. And now your words are gonna hit those walls, but a second wave comes up behind that. and shoves you forward and builds under the ship and makes it level just so you can cross over this side. And as you're about to smash into the doors on the other side, you hear a huge blast of air. They crash open and you go flowing in and you're sitting on that side and you can see a control panel active on that side. And in your head, Deliria, you hear flood them all. You see that if you wreck that control panel, it'll open the doors behind you and this ocean will flood that ocean uncontrollably and it will wash that land clean. Oh! Excuse me, everyone. I, um... I'll be right back. A wave reaches up. Water seems to solidify as you just take a step off the deck. Every step you take closer, water forms to catch your feet and you just stride towards this panel. I take a knife from my leg. I peel it out and I stab the control panel with the knife. A wave washes you back onto the deck and washes the ship forward as water begins to suck out. You are being forced forward against this tremendous current that is now roaring and roaring and roaring as water empties into the lands below. And destruction waits tens of thousands as the voice laughs in the back of your head. Yes. We have chosen so very well. Now, two things happen. First of all, you have all advanced onto a new section of die. So you all <gasps> gain a level, oh. except for Deliria, <laughs> who gains two. Whoa! Two levels. And we're going to hold right there. 
My name is Alex Valente, pronouns he, him. I am a bisexual bilingual Britalian on Musqueam, Squamish, and Silibutooth land. I have been a cleaner, publishing intern, waiter, scare actor, editor, university lecturer, language teacher, shop manager, and more usually, a translator. I can be found in tiny writing on the credits page of books when publishers remember the name the translator, and lurking in DTRPG spaces when people forget I'm there. I'm Banana, my pronouns are she, they, and he, and I'm a tabletop game designer and writer. I'm also the owner and co-founder of the RPG and small box board game publishing company, Game in a Curry. I love horror movies and cheesecake a lot. You can find me at Banana Chan Games on Twitter, Instagram, Blue Sky, TikTok, all of the social media. I'm Jen De La Vega. You might know me as Vivian Lakewood on the Shadowrun podcast, Fun City, Merquesa Maldar on the Still Fleet miniseries, Float City, and The Keeper on Cozy City, a Brindlewood Bay mystery. I also happen to be a chef and cookbook author based in Brooklyn, New York. You can find me online as Randwiches. That's the word sandwiches, but replace the S with an R. My name is Haley Whipjack, and I'm an educator, podcaster, and a passionate fan of making fun things. I am a co-host, game master, and a player on TTRPG Actual Play podcast, Unprepared Casters, while also pursuing personal creative projects on my TikTok and YouTube channels. My name is Christian, better known as Cap in most online spaces. I use he, him pronouns. I am a performer, producer, and writer in the TTRPG space. I have produced, performed in, and organized events with Friends Roll Dice, Roll20, Asians Represent, Utopia, and many other groups and organizations to forward the work in uplifting marginalized identities in the TTRPG space. Occasionally, I'll appear as a guest in actual play streams, podcasts, and talk shows to lend my voice and expertise in storytelling and character-driven narratives. And my name is Aram. I'm a producer, designer, photographer, and voice actor living in a quiet town off Lake Michigan. I'm a co-founder of the storytelling podcasting collective Dead Ghost Productions, co-host of the Dungeons & Dragons podcast Kill Every Monster, and the creator of God's Fall and of Now and Then. I also did the editing and sound design for Replay. You can find all of my shows and all of my social media at aram.gay. Thank you for joining us for the launch of Dead Ghost Productions. We are a queer run and own studio and a proud member of the Realm Network. Keep up to date with Replay and all of our projects by following us on Twitter at Dead Ghost Pro. Find all of our social media and all the shows we produce at deadghostpro.com. Listen to episodes of Replay early and ad-free at patreon.com slash deadghostpro. This show was produced and edited by Dead Ghost Productions. Find out more about us and all the shows we make at deadghostpro.com. <laughs>